I'm a big fan of the movies in the series Air Bud, is a phrase you've probably never heard someone say before. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're fine kids movies, but it's not like you're going to actually learn something about, like, sports strategies from them. But what if you could? Many NFL head coaches pride themselves on the long hours they spend watching game film. But what if they were watching the wrong film? In these particular Air Bud movies, there's a dog that's good at one specific sport. There's one on soccer, there's one on basketball, there's one on football, so on and so forth. And it really makes you start to think, could there actually be a dog that could be great at a particular sport? Again, said no one ever. But maybe everyone else is wrong. My own personal dog is, as a whole, incredibly stupid. But I have a film football and I started playing catch with her and she picked up on it in no time. And she's just some dog. Certainly not the 1% of the 1% of the best canine athletes in the world. If you look on YouTube, you can find some dogs producing incredible athletic achievements. The fastest dog, according to Google, is the Greyhound, who can run up to 45 miles an hour, which would be a 1.1 second 40 yard dash. No athlete has ever ran faster than a 4.2 40 yard dash. Now, there are some inherent problems with having a dog in a football game. I mean, they're not going to be able to tackle or anything, but, you know, they could at least be a wide receiver. You could teach them to run in a straight line and catch a ball. Although, you probably don't want to have them really catch the ball anywhere other than the end zone because they could easily end up just dropping off the ball by a defender's feet. I mean, let's be honest. Dogs are too trustworthy. We could also get our first female NFL athlete this way, which would be huge news for everyone, but especially the women out there watching this video, which according to my analytics is about 3% of you. So there it is. We've settled it. You know, NFL teams spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year trying to get as many advantages as possible, and getting a dog on your team is undoubtedly an advantage. But would it be allowed? On one hand, I don't see why not. I mean, nowhere in the NFL rules does it state that a dog can't play football. The only time dog is even mentioned in the NFL rules is as an acronym for delay of game. Now, the NFL roster does state that you can't have more than 53 players, but at no point does it say what species classification those players have to fall under. Although, there is one rule that might give this otherwise foolproof plan some potential issues. An unfair act is stated in the rules as an obviously illegal act that has a major impact on the game. An example of this would be the battle between Rice and Alabama in the 1954 Cotton Bowl Classic. Rice's running back was on his way to a surefire touchdown when seemingly out of nowhere, Alabama running back Tommy Lewis came out of the sideline and tackled him before he was able to get into the end zone. Now, there is a penalty in the rule book that says you can't do this. However, it's just you can't have an extra player come onto the field, and it's only a five-yard penalty. So, typically, that would be a great situation for Alabama. You get the five-yard penalty, and you don't give up a touchdown. That's an easy trade-off. However, the refs deemed it palpably unfair, which totally makes sense, and the touchdown was awarded regardless. A very similar thing happened actually just a few years back in a Steelers-Ravens game, where Pittsburgh's head coach Mike Tomlin pretended like he was about to accidentally walk onto the field, and this prevented a touchdown from scoring. Now, it ended up only getting ruled a 15-yard penalty in this case, even though it probably should have been ruled palpably unfair. So, is it palpably unfair to have a teammate that's a golden retriever. i tell you one thing, boys. That there's a golden receiver. All right, fine. Would it be palpably unfair to have a golden receiver? I mean, if a team decided to sign a snail to play wide receiver, I don't think too many people would have a problem with that. However, if a team decided that their defensive line was going to be made up of grizzly bears and they just mauled the entire opposing offense, that would seem a tad unfair to me. So... What about a dog? I mean, on one hand, it's clearly an advantage to have a dog, as I've stated earlier. But at the same time, if you can have an NFL player who's a person who trained their entire life for the sport, who's used the world's best medical achievements to make themselves as strong and as fast as possible, and that team can then sign that player for a half a billion dollar contract, is that really that much more unfair than signing Fido off the dog park? 
Actually, it's not as up for interpretation as it might seem. The NFL rulebook clearly states an unfair act is a foul that can be called when a player or team commits a flagrant and obviously illegal act that has a major impact on the game. But it has no specification on who qualifies as a player. If Airbud is a player, then running as fast as he can wouldn't be a palpably unfair act. Meaning, according to NFL rules, literally any animal in the animal kingdom could theoretically play in an NFL game. The Chicago Bears defense could be made up of actual bears. Although, with their offense, they'd still probably find a way to go 8-8. Eight and eight. And as for Air Bud, yeah, there's no rule that says he can't play. Well, actually, there is one problem. Uh, the NFL rulebook does have a stipulation that you have to wear a helmet with a full face guard, which would make things very difficult for a dog to catch a ball. On top of this, if you have a bear out there, I'm almost certain that mauling another player to death would at least be a 15-yard unnecessary roughness penalty. I don't know. Maybe you could put a cow on your offensive line or something. That's all I got.